Good morning, everybody. This is Dan on the cell on a very foggy Tuesday morning. It's unusual because when it's this foggy, you don't expect it to be that cold, but it's just three degrees here in southern British Columbia, uh, which would make it 37 equivalent in the States. So it's a pretty chilly morning. And I've just realized I'm nearly out of gas, so <laughs> I need to quickly stop and put some in. Well, so much for being on track for being a very good time for work today. <laughs> the best laid plans, right? Um, so just a couple of things to update in terms of <laughs> the, the, the daily saga that is my life. Um, yesterday, when I was coming to work, I noticed that um, my neighbor had the Rotor Rooter type guys out. Um, I think it was Mr. Rooter or something. And, you know, that's a problem we've been having, as you know. And we're on the same line, so um, it gets very difficult. But. I was so fed up with us always, on my side, always getting the backup first and this guy not really taking a whole lot of attention that I decided to put a sewer backup valve on my system. And what that basically does, uh, it's in my furnace room and it stops the sewer from backing up into the house. Now, it's a two-way valve. In other words, it'll still, if my hot water tank blows, it'll still drain water down into the system, uh, but it won't let water come back up from the other side. And that saved me this time. And it backed up into his and not into mine. And now, guess what? Now he really paid attention. And so what we think we have from the camera that went down yet again. Uh, it appears that there is a piece of pipe through my sewer drain. We're not sure whether it's a piece of rebar or a piece of um, you know, metal pipe that's got jammed in there that accidentally fell down the system, who knows? But a piece of pipe has been down that system for a long time. And that's what's causing all the backups. And for some reason, whenever we clear the system, we're not clearing enough because of this pipe. It's all backing up behind the pipe and you can't sort of get to it. So now we've had to dig down all around the sewer pipe. Then on Monday, because we needed a free day when the neighbor was there, they are going to bring the guy back again and he's going to cut that pipe out and then put a a plumber's seal on the pipe. In other words, I think they put some sort of sleeve inside it, expand it, and it adheres to the pipe. And then, I think you do a lot of praying from that point onwards. <laughs> but the idea is that it will totally reseal the pipe. And, if it all works, we will now have a drainage system that works, and we won't have to live in fear of this backup all the time. I'm talking about that because you probably notice I'm sounding quite calm about it. The reality is that I actually don't have the money to pay for all of this. You know, I've just had to pay for my house insurance and a few other things that were unexpected bills. And, and this is one too many, if you like, emergency for my emergency fund. But, you know, again, I have to say that I am really glad that I have um, an overdraft facility, and I do, and that I have you know, sort of over the years built up my credit so that, you know, if necessary, I can go and plead <laughs> with the bank, which I don't intend to do because I can just bite the bullet. Now, the other thing is that I have holiday money saved up. So there's part of me that goes, I could, and it's, it's cash. You know what I mean? I've, I've been holding this money. I've been saving every month a little bit for my holiday. 
the idea is just before I go, I'm going to put it all in the bank and then I'll take out the American equivalent. So the thing is, I may need to use my holiday money. If, it, if that is what I have to do, that's what I have to do. But what I wanted to really say is there's no point panicking about it. There's no point in getting angry about it. There's no point doing anything except accept, accepting it for what it is. Do you know how many times have you heard me say that it is what it is? Getting myself into an absolute rage about it or getting myself into it. It's not fair. Why does it always happen to me? Into it. It's not going to change it. It still is what it is, right? At the end of the day, it's still going to be there. still going to need to be paid for. And I'm still going to need to make a plan. And so I think what has been the greatest freedom in my life was the day I got it. And I cannot tell you how many times really helpful people try to explain to me that it is what it is. And I go, yeah, but you don't understand it. And they go, yeah, actually I do. And it is what it is. So for any of you who are inclined to really um, be very reactionary, you know, everything is a major drama for you. I want you to really practice taking a deep breath when these things happen and going, well, as Sal would say, it is what it is. Now I just need to make a plan. I don't know what plan to make. I don't really care. I just need to make a plan because it is what it is. Go ahead. So our topic for today is Strangely enough, the second story I've heard like this, um, but somebody who asked me if I could give them some help. Let me give you the base background, and as I said, it's not the first story I've heard like this, I've heard two. And that's what makes, it, makes me realize maybe there are a lot more with the same sort of problem, not necessarily exactly the same, but the same sort of problem. The one I heard about is a mother whose son is a little um, autistic, I think. I wasn't quite sure. And forgive me for this one. I can't remember what the issue was. Um, but in some way, mentally incapacitated. I had been so disruptive in the household that she had actually He'd actually left and, and was living on his own. And I gathered that the, the problem was not major. You understand, she wasn't throwing out her son that was not going to be able to survive in the real world. That was not the case at all. Um, anyway, so what happened was that The son came back only when he needed something. I wonder how many of you relate to that. Couldn't be bothered to talk to the mother at all. Couldn't be bothered to phone her. Couldn't be bothered to do anything. But suddenly he was without um, somewhere to store some stuff. And so then he, con you know, then he phoned mummy and said, uh, I'm bringing stuff because I need to put it somewhere while I find a new place to live and apparently came while she wasn't there and sort of dumped it. The wheels came off somewhere along the line here. The, the mum got really upset. And so she had a few words on, I think, Facebook or one of the social media sites that she sort of lives to regret, but she did have a few words to say that were pretty angry. Now she feels terrible because it's her flesh and blood and she has been very reactionary with this. And so she asked me, you know, what do I do? What do I do? I've been writing to him and asking him to contact me and he won't. I'd like to suggest, and I don't know if anybody else is listening to this story. Oh, somewhere along the line here, by the way, the reason, that's right, the reason for the reaction was that he had come home at Christmas time or something and hurt the family dog uh, who had just come out of an operation. And that was the last straw for the mother. And that's when she let rip. Anyway, I think that's the base of it. Anyway, so what happens now is that she's feeling tremendous guilt. She has tried to reach out to the son and the son's not responding. And you know, her question to me is, what do I do? Well, I don't know what you do. Because this is your life and this is your son and what you do is your business. 
but I can tell you what I would thoroughly recommend. Uh, everything about the story as you told it to me and not necessarily the way I told it here. Everything that I heard when I, or, or that I could, could understand from when I was reading your email was that in some way you are codependent to your son. Now codependent means that your happiness is tied into his happiness. Um, some of you know that in your relationships, you know, I'm only happy if my spouse is happy and, it, and it's my spouse's job to make me happy, sort of thing, you know. Um, and so what I heard when I was reading this email was incredible guilt uh, about something that you cannot change. You can't take back the words you said. I don't care how much you try, you cannot take them back. They're done. It is what it is. It's over. All you know, and you can say that, okay, fine, I didn't really mean them. Or did you? I think you did. I think what's scary is just how angry you were. And so, sorry, I'm just watching a woman who doesn't look like she should be riding a bike, trying to ride a bike. <laughs> you know, things amuse me during my ride to work, right? Um, anyway, so what do I recommend? Well, you're probably not gonna like this. But if you ask for my opinion, I will just give you my opinion. It's not necessarily the right thing. If my best friend came to me with this issue, I'd say get yourself to a therapist. If you happen to be in a job that allows you to have, um, has an EAP program, that's an employee assistance program, normally allows you to have sort of like six visits with the therapist for a family matter or if it's more serious than they refer you on. But it's just like, if you've got a job and you can get that, I'd do it. I'd actually do it anyway. The fact that you can't deal with the guilt of this is what is going to tear you apart. And guilt is a horrible thing. It, it really is, it's, in, it's, it's a horrible thing. Um, I, I still live with some of the guilt that, rightly or wrongly, the nuns instilled on me um, when I was a kid. Now, they didn't mean it to do it that way, I'm sure. They meant to teach me these things so that I would, you know, know right from wrong. But I got news for you. I got some serious guilt <laughs> put on me at that time of my life. And so I've now learned that guilt is not a healthy thing. So what one needs to do is you either deal with something or you don't. But don't feel guilty about it. So if you're going, okay, fine, I feel really badly about what I did to my son, um, and I can't forgive myself, then you're the one that needs some help, not your son. The other version that I have of this is that I have one viewer whose son is um, violent and has hurt members of the family, and she desperately wants to keep the family together. My heart really bleeds for her because this is a real catch-22. Somewhere she knows that, that it's gone past the time and yet she can't bring herself to get help for her son. Um, and again, part of me goes, if, if, if this is what's going on in your life, then to get some help around it is really important be that spiritual help uh, for those of you who may be members of a, of a church. Um, you know, some of you can perhaps get spiritual help on this. But you definitely need to look at it from a different place. I used to be so guilty on so many levels that it wasn't even funny. I was definitely codependent in my relationships and I have learned so much more than that. And it's almost as though I have changed my, my thinking around. I am now so aware that it is my job to make myself happy. It is my job to forgive myself of when I mess up. And for all of you who write to me about the fun moments I have when I do a doofus thing, you know, I drop the mince pies on the floor or, or do whatever. And, you know, I do it all the time. Um, the reason that I've learned to laugh at myself is because I got fed up with beating up on myself. I really did. I got fed up with beating up on myself all the time. You know, comparing myself to people 
that, that seem to be more together than myself. I wonder if any of you are doing that. And so I really, really, really um, give you my thought for the day, which is, you know, be gentle with yourself. And if you're struggling with guilt, that's a pretty good wake-up call that you need some help. Now, the help literally can be a couple of just hours with somebody who knows what they're doing. You know, and that could change your life. It could change your thinking. If you're saying, well, I can't get that, I can't afford it, I can't, you know, I don't have any way of doing that, go to the library and, and get talk to the librarian about, you know, you want a book about dealing with guilt. There are stacks of books out there. You know, get a book and read. Uh, boy, and today you've got the biggest library in the world. It's called the Internet. You know, type it in. Read all you can about how to not do this. But it is a big subject and one that I will try and address a little more because it's definitely coming up a lot these days. And I understand how painful it is because I've done it so much. So much. And so for those of you struggling with guilt, you know, I want to send you a big hug. I'd like to suggest that half the time you really were frustrated or angry enough to do what you did. And it might not be the perfect parenting and it might not be the whatever, you know, that you're beating up on yourself about. Or maybe it was. Maybe it was tough love. Maybe it was a wake-up call. And I would really ask any of the viewers who ever had somebody lose it with them when they overstepped the mark and that that was their wake-up call for it to change. If any of you had that happen to you, perhaps you could support um, this viewer and just let them know your story. Because I think all too often we think the fact that we lost our temper on an issue is a bad thing. I think sometimes we need to lose our temper a little more often. I think we need to set that boundary. This is not acceptable behavior. And if you want to behave like that, you don't get to be in this house. I've said that to people. Uh, for those of you who are struggling with guilt, for those of you who have had a moment when you weren't perfect, I forgive you. I really do forgive you. And I'm sure that if you believe in God, that God will forgive you as well. Uh, what you need to do is to find a way to forgive yourself. And if you can't, you need some help doing that. This is Dear Mama Sal saying bye-bye for now.